Okay, my project today is to make a bubble level like you see on that front tripod there, the bubble level at the bottom. I've made that little plate that attaches to the, the tripod so that I can level the tripod for panning sequences. Um, that tripod is my old Manfrotto 3221W. The W was on there for winter because the legs have some foam padding on it so you, your hands won't get cold. The other tripod is my uh, main hiking tripod, which is a Gitzo GT2530 with an Arca Swiss head on it. So anyway, that front tripod uh, has a 3030 head on it, and it's fine for uh, indoors and, you know, if you want something fairly stable, but it's pretty heavy. I used to use it all the time before I bought the lighter tripod for hiking. The Gitzo that you see there in the back is really nice for hiking because it's so light. The Arca Swiss head on it probably weighs as much as the tripod. Anyway, I'm going to make a bubble level for that one and I'll show you the process to do that. So let's move on to the workshop. Okay, I'm out in the shop here and I'm going to uh, use this little bubble level for the level on the tripod. And uh, you can see it's a Pittsburgh. I got this at um, Harbor Freight. It costs 69 cents, so this is going to be an inexpensive project. Let's take this out of here. So I knew, do need to modify this first. Um, you notice this, this gray ring around the outside where you can screw it onto a surface. I'm going to take most of that off uh, in my lathe here. So let me get this set up. Okay, I'm going to mount this in the uh, in the lathe this way but I'm going to have to space it out because I'm going to have to cut off this edge or trim it down slowly and I want to put this clear piece in the, the chuck and I don't want to ruin it so I can't, I can't bite down on it too hard. First thing I'm going to do is take a strip of paper and wrap around that, that clear section kind of protect it from the jaws of the, the chuck. I'm just going to tear this to about the right length to wrap around one time. And then, whoops, that didn't quite work. Okay, so that's close. The next thing I'm going to do is to um, space it out from the chuck just a little bit. I'm just going to use a washer here to space it out about the right distance. I get it even on all three sides. I can get this paper in there so I don't ruin it. pretty close. I'm tightening it down just enough to hold this. I'm going to have to trim it off there slowly so it doesn't uh, push that right out of the chuck. So this will kind of be a bit of a slow tedious process. Let me see if I can't move the camera around so you can actually see what's being cut. Okay, I'm ready to start cutting here. And I'm just going to cut off a little bit at a time.
as you can see it kind of gets tangled up on there so I'm gonna have to clear out the cuttings before I can continue so I'll have to do this several times to get this down to the actual size that I desire The other thing I have to be careful on this is that um, I don't go too far in and actually put the the cutter into the jaws of the lathe here because I'm just spaced out maybe in less than an eighth of an inch. I'm getting close so I want to be real careful I don't cut too far. Almost there. I'm going to go just a little bit more. I think that's it. The other thing I'm going to do is face off this outside edge a little bit. It's got a little ring right there that's high. Okay, that looks good. <clears throat> okay, I want to show you the bubble after I took that gray outer ring off of there. And now it's flat on the bottom as well, because I'm going to attach this with double-sided sticky tape anyway so that's that's it now I need to cut the metal base that's um, gonna hook on the tripod okay um, the, the little bubble level is gonna go underneath this head on top of the plate here so let's go ahead and take this head off and it um, is attached by a three-quarter inch bolt that comes out of the head. And I'm just going to cut it out of this piece of aluminum I got here, which is a scrap. And I've um, measured this and it's about 75 thousandths thick. Okay, what I'm going to do first is just mark this with a sharpie to the dimension that I want. I'm just going to mark around this radius here. And then I'm going to also put this off to the side and mark around it as well but I'm not going to use the sharpie because I don't want to color that gray plastic I'll get a pencil to do that I want to space it out just a little bit from the outside of that mark and then I'm going to um, I'll just use a piece of metal here I'm going <clears> to <throat> trace a line and I'm actually going to cut to the inside of this black line. I'm going to trace a line from the edge of this small diameter to the large diameter. And 
don't know if you can see that, but that's going to be the basic shape. It'll be this kind of oblong looking thing. And I'll have to mark a hole in the center here for where I'm going to drill a hole to mount it. So let's find the center of that hole. Well, actually, I think I'll do that after I get it cut out. Okay, I'm going to do most of the cutting here with a jigsaw with a metal blade in it. And this is kind of noisy, so I'm going to put some earplugs in. I'll go ahead and finish that up and come back. Okay, I've got the basic shape cut out with the jigsaw. This small radius here, I'm just going to trim off little pieces with it, just a hacksaw. So let me go ahead and do that. One thing I didn't mention earlier is I was holding this in the uh, vise, but I've got these rubber soft jaws in here so I don't uh, ding up the metal. And actually, when I cut this, I want this edge of the vise fairly close to the edge that I'm cutting so that uh, it doesn't bend the metal. I'm just trying to get this close. I'll use a file to take it down to the final location. Okay, that's close enough. Next thing I'll do is take a file. So I'm going to take a fairly coarse file to begin with to get it to the rough shape. pretty close. I'm going to go to a finer cut file now to get those edges a little smoother. What I'm doing now is smoothing out this edge so that any marks from the hacksaw or the jigsaw or the coarser file are removed. I get a finer file mark. can see that edge but now it's fairly smooth on the edge the next thing I need to do is take off this sharp corner though on both sides I'm just gonna do that by hand holding it cut it about a 45 degree angle and when I go around the corners I'm rolling the file as I do it
Okay. That's pretty close. I'll probably take a little bit of sandpaper on the edge here too. 